Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance, saving and investing every week. I've been away for a couple of weeks um, for personal reasons, but I'm back. Sadly, I'm back with a bit of bad news. On Tuesday, August 17th, the Central Bank of Nigeria secured a court order to freeze the accounts of investing platforms Bamboo, Trove, Chaka, and Risevest. These are fintech apps or fintech companies and investment platforms which I personally use. So what exactly happened? Well, according to the Whistler.ng, a federal high court in Abuja has granted the motion to freeze the bank accounts of Bamboo, Risevest, Trove, and Chaka. These are very popular investment platforms that allow Nigerians to invest in the stocks and assets of foreign companies from right here in Nigeria. Now remember that particular detail because it may pop up again later on in this video. Anyway, the motion was filed on behalf of the Central Bank of Nigeria by its representative, Michael Aunduaka. So why did this happen? Well, the CBN alleges that these four fintech companies have been operating as asset management companies without the required license to do so. According to the CBN, they've been sourcing foreign exchange from the Nigerian foreign exchange market to purchase foreign shares and bonds. And once again, according to the CBN, this is in violation of a stipulation contained in a July 2015 CBN circular. Now here's where it gets a bit weird. According to the CBN's legal representative, these four fintech companies' foreign exchange transactions have been making the Naira weaker to the dollar, hence the need to freeze their accounts for six months. So let me get this straight. What the CBN is basically saying is that A, these companies have been operating without the required license all this while, and B, their activities, their foreign exchange transactions and activities have been making the Naira weaker against the dollar. So not the fact that the Nigerian economy is, isn't diversified and we're highly dependent on oil, not the fact that we don't produce enough quality made in Nigeria goods and as a result we're highly dependent on imported goods. So not that stuff. It's the activities of four fintech companies that are under four years old that are contributing to a weaker Naira. Got it. Let's continue. What does this all mean? Well, first of all, I have to say that the four fintech companies affected by this haven't denied the existence of the court order. In fact, they've all sent emails, I've received some and I'm sure you have as well, that they're aware of what's happening and that their teams are engaging with the relevant authorities to sort things out and that our transactions and our deposits and our investments are all safe. I believe all that. But to be honest, I won't be surprised if in the days or the weeks to come, we, we as users start to see more and more restrictions on our ability to transact or do business on these platforms as the fintech companies try and comply with the court order or, you know, the CBN's directives. And I'm not trying to spread rumors or cause panic, but I'm just saying that I won't be surprised if we start to see more restrictions and, you know, we're unable to maybe buy and sell, you know, stocks on these platforms or to deposit money or withdraw money from these platforms. And I think ultimately that's what the CBN wants. I, I believe that they want to try and ground the operations of these platforms for a considerable amount of time. Because if not, why would they want to freeze their bank accounts for six months? How do they expect these companies to continue to run and function for half a year? That's a really long time. What does the CBN expect to happen to the employees of these companies or even to us, the users and investors who use these, um, their apps? And, you know, how do they just expect us to carry on for such a long period of time? It all seems a bit inconsiderate, if you ask me. And that's even putting it mildly. And when things like this happen, what you tend to find is that people panic and customers try and liquidate their assets and get their money out as soon as possible before they can't access it anymore. And, you know, to be honest, you can't really blame them. It is their money and they don't know what the future holds. But at the same time, mass behavior like that hardly ever augurs well. In addition, this just feels like another move in a series of moves by the federal government or the CBN to make life and doing business increasingly more difficult for many Nigerians who are just trying to keep their heads above water. If you remember back in February, the CBN banned um, commercial banks from facilitating transactions with cryptocurrency platforms. In April, the Securities and Exchange Commission released a circular about their concern of the proliferation of investment platforms that allow people to invest in foreign assets and stocks. 
in um, June, the federal government banned Twitter, an app that has facilitated lots of businesses in Nigeria, both big and small, and an, an app that lots of people get their livelihood from. In July, the Central Bank of Nigeria banned the sale of foreign exchange to Bureau de Change operators. And now, in August, the CBN has acquired this order to freeze the accounts of these four fintech companies that allow people to invest in foreign exchange sorry in foreign stocks and assets and all this happened just this year and i'm sure that the central bank and the federal government think that they're sanitizing the economy with these moves but first of all they're they're less drastic ways to accomplish that and secondly it feels like these moves cause a lot more harm than good when you think about it because they're costing people their livelihoods their legitimate livelihoods and they're they're not i don't i can't say that they're actually providing you know livelihoods and sources of income for either these people who have lost their livelihoods or other people these actions these directives these moves seem to be just taking away from nigerians rather than providing for them Anyway, guys, that's the what and the why of this now legal debacle between the Central Bank of Nigeria and these four fintech um, platforms or companies. Um, if you have assets or investments with any of these companies, I do encourage you to give a lot of thought to what you want to do with those assets, particularly over the next six months in case things get a bit sticky. Um, my heart really does go out to all of us who are negatively affected by this. And I really do hope that going forward, the central bank and the federal government can think of more palatable ways to go about these things and ways that don't you know, increase the um, gap between the rich and the poor and ways that don't af negatively affect the livelihoods of law-abiding citizens. Very important. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it by clicking on the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please subscribe as well by clicking the red subscribe button. If you do that, be sure to help yourself to some refreshments as well in your own refrigerator. <laughs> Finally, guys, um, if the story unfolds with this whole situation between the CBN and these fintech platforms, I will most likely do an updated video. Look out for that video as well by coming back to the channel to check for it. Thanks for the final time, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.